definitely, you know, a long road to get to this point. Stuff takes time. My dad, he always say, man, he's so stubborn. Yeah, I'm stubborn, but my stubbornness, that's what got me here. Well, if you want to, we can do outside. It's cool out here. The humidity in there is just too much, man. It's thick, too. You know, at this point, I was like, I want to fight Terrence Crawford. I don't want to fight anybody else. I'm super competitive. He's super competitive. And I don't want to lose him. He don't want to lose me. I think this fight really decides not only who's the best pound for pound, but who's the best fighter in the world, period. Sometimes when a fight grows so large, even the time-trusted cliches don't apply. Because when the clamor, weight, and noise give way, there's no calm before the storm. There's just a storm announcing the larger deluge upcoming. It's time for one of the most anticipated fights of this decade, Spence versus Crawford. And the winner is boxing's pound for pound best fighter in the world. To make not just a fight, but a night, the perfect fight. Two undefeated champions summoned a virtue not often associated with their craft. To approach perfection, they needed patience. Like that, I'm gonna have to take that. In 2017, Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford were surging, rising, cementing. Crawford, at super lightweight, became the first undisputed champion in 12 years. He moved up to welterweight, where Spence had just snagged his first belt. And all of boxing began wishing on the alignment of two stars. What's next? Everybody know who I want next. You already know who I want. But six years is a fistic eternity. We've been licking our chops from day one, because this is a fight that we always wanted. Throughout them, both champions proved that in order to pursue perfection, they had just enough patience to arrive in exactly the right place. Ring Magazine champ, two times. At precisely the right time. Terrence Crawford is the only fight that I want. We're going to make each other great. And now with Saturday, July 29th, not close, but here. Forget what patience cold, because what matters is more transformative. You're going to see a new, undisputed, welterweight champion from Omaha, Nebraska. Because now, the prize is immortality. I couldn't think of a better scenario than this. And the title of Best Fighter Alive. Twenty-eight no, thirty-nine and no, thirty knockouts, twenty-two knockouts. Who's the A side? I'm the guy for sure. I'm the I'm the A side. It gotta be A side, and that's why we was going. That's why the business side was kind of, because with him, he just didn't want to believe that I'm the big dog. When we talk about ticket sales, talk about putting butts in the seats, all that. And he didn't want to believe that. He was like, well, I did this. I won these belts. I did this. That's cool. We try to take that to the bank. That conversation, if me and him sitting here like, I'm the dog, I'm the big dog, I'm the big dog, bitch. You. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how that conversation go with y'all, but that's how it would go with me. I feel like he's my dancing partner and I'm his dancing partner. Like, that's hard, you know though. We meant for each yeah, other. Yeah, I love that. So we got to make it happen. This is one of these legendary fights. This is like Sugar Ray not fighting Tommy Hearns. Correct. Or Tommy Hearns not fighting Marvin Hagler, you know? So it's something that basically for me, I feel like it had to happen. Man, can't wait to see it. I love it. Hey, yo. <laughs> now we go, hey, now it's time to go talk to Bud. <laughs> I read somewhere in the rematch clause where he said he don't know if he'll take it if he lose or when he lose, as you might think. Do you believe him? If I beat the, beat the will out of him, he probably won't take it. It's, wow. It's scary wow. how calm y'all talk about taking a man's soul. <laughs> like when I when I go to fight people, like I be low up, like they gonna bite my lip, and you be like, yeah, I'ma just uh, I'ma just like take everything out of him when he don't even believe in himself no more. Because <laughs> it's his job. <laughs> but that is crazy to hear dudes talk. The lead up is over, but the fight to salivate over 
it's on. And for Spence, there's a new twist. The dangerous heat wave enveloping his home state of Texas. But halt training? No way. Because there's a bout he must win. At Spence's side is an absolute fixture, his trainer, Derek James. Together, for roughly a decade, they've married a cerebral approach with workouts designed for intensity to ready Spence for his specialty, winning big time fights. When you prepare someone for something of this magnitude, if I miss something, that's something that I miss will come out in the fight, and that'll be something that Crawford can capitalize on. One more round, three minutes. I think the closer it gets to the fight, the more serious he becomes. I meditate, because I'm practicing Buddhist. My meditation is that I am everything that he needs me to be. He's been there since day one. I got to where I'm at because of his vision. It was not only my hard work and determination, but it was his hard work and determination. Five years ago, James converted a defunct furniture warehouse into his baby, the world-class boxing gym. The vibe, make do with what you have. And the world-class part, just look around at so many champions, all grown or polished right here. With what Derek does here, it's not only the physical, it's the fundamentals. And also, bro, this here, this here, this here gets pushed, so I think that's why I see, like, if you look at Errol, you can push, push, push. So can Crawford, but I'm, I'm rooting for Errol. I'm rooting for Errol in this fight, but good luck to both men. And we like this, the list of stars seeking guidance from James now features Anthony Joshua, Jermel Charlo, Ryan Garcia, and up-and-comer Frank Martin. Boxing may be an individual sport, but this stable forms a strong team. I feel like Darius like a, a Popovich, you know. I'm like a Tim Duncan. You got Anthony Joshua, he's like a David Robinson. The whole lineup, you got Ryan Garcia, he's like a Mano Ginobili. You know, you got Frank, he like a Tony Parker. <laughs> Just last month, James left camp to receive the Boxing Writers Association of America's Trainer of the Year Award. Congratulations to 2022 winner, Derek James. I'm very thankful to be in this space and time with so many great people in the sport of boxing. Thank you all. Appreciate that. And great, have a great night. The recognition was meaningful in no small part because it gave his early detractors something to consider. Everybody in this space has been doubted before. People not believing in you, constantly just like being challenged or dismissed. People are like, you're not a good trainer, you should stop. And you think about how far you've come. You know, being doubted is a part of life, but at the same time, proving people wrong is another part of life. I think that throughout the fight, I think he had a great game plan. I think that Terrence would make some dynamic is that he's very elusive and he's very, uh, he use, he's able to use his arm length and his distance. He's really more athletic than he is boxing skill. So, I mean, he's very athletic, very fast, very quick twitch muscles. And so that's really what it is, is his athleticism. He's a great threat, but you can't judge the depth of his uh, desire until you get in the ring, right? Because it's like, Errol's just hitting you and breaking your ribs and breaking your orbital bone, and you keep fighting, you're breaking your nose. You can't see that from his record. But on paper, he is the most accomplished fighter in boxing. But I think that it comes a point when somebody's breaking you, how, how, um, how much do you really want it? And that's what we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she won't be dancing on the 29th. Don't wear your dancing shoes, mama.
You will not be dancing. Majestic scenery aside, camp life is the worst. Terence Crawford endures the drudgery with coaches and fellow boxers at his side. Their day is regimented, their grind scheduled. And all know the man in charge, Brian Bomack McIntyre, Crawford's head trainer, business partner, and salvation. Good morning, everybody. Mountain run today. Gotta keep them legs in shape. It's great because we hold each other accountable. Like today, I'm like, man, nah. But he like, man, come on. I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, and those are the moments that is defining in a fight where those last rounds that your body is telling you no, but your mind is like, let's go. So it all works out. You ready? I'm a nose. The roots of Crawford's and Bomack's bromance formed a generation ago when Bomack and Bud's father fought for the same club boxing team. I actually met Bud the first time he was still in his mama's womb, pretty much. I believe it's in his blood, you know, because his grandfather boxed, his, um, his dad boxed. You know, we all actually lived in the same neighborhood. I say a block from each other. Perhaps it was fate, two men capable of greatness, each in need of the other, just happened to be from the same place. Watching come up as a young kid, to a young adult, to a father, to the champion that he is today, to him get ready to step in the ring, one of the toughest fight ever. I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm proud of it, I'm just going to say I'm glad to be a part of it. Pound for pound! Pound for pound! There we go! Pound for pound! Best fighter in the world! Work time! July 2-9, we're going to do it bad! Bud's Buds have been with him forever, and he wants this super fight where he plans to claim the title best boxer in the world to reflect their efforts as well. I always see a lot of coaches get the credit that they deserve, but my coaches never get the credit that they deserve. And they brought me from nothing to something, from Omaha, Nebraska, to world champion. When you bring dogs in, I mean, I mean, camp is getting serious. Because, you know, we always got dogs in the camp. Especially pit bulls. We in that mind frame. Kill them. Go get them. Fire up. Fire up. I'm in shape. We know that. You know, now it's, it's about executing the game plan and staying sharp. That's it. The fight of a lifetime is so close. It feels like a lifetime away. As training shifts to maintenance, details, the mental fortitude necessary to topple formidable opposition. That's the name of the game now, staying motivated when you're tired. Trainers are great for that, but nothing beats having dad at your side. It's great to have my, my dad here, being that, you know, my dad wasn't, wasn't always there, but he's there now and it feels good because that's all I wanted as a kid was for my dad to be where he is now. So it's motivating, it's, it's, it's inspiring to me because my dad is always that eye like, all right, let's go. And I still get that little kid, kid feeling like I gotta push harder because my dad said go. I train too hard to think about losing. 
Do it cross my mind? Yeah, it always crossed my mind. What if? But my mind is so strong that it kicks those negative thoughts out. This is one of the biggest fights. Like I said, the, the biggest fight of my career to date. And this is one of them fights that will be talked about forever. I think the shark teeth would be cool because that's like your thing. If you seen a Van Holyfield fight, you know how his mouthpiece was, like just super thick. Yeah. Like I don't want it like that, but I want it to protect my mouth. So he wants shark teeth and he wants one with an eye, a brown eye. I wanted something to just, just stay in my mouth and it's my teeth now because the mouthpiece I had were <clears throat> my teeth before my car crash. I think my last four fights, my mouthpiece and came out. It's been the most accurate mouthpiece you'll ever have. And now the truth. So the Ugas fight, I had a partial in my mouth that I had to glue in like every day. The sixth round, he hit me when my mouthpiece came out, but. I'm just thinking that my teeth came out. Man, that would have been super embarrassing. Man, if my teeth out, man, it's going to be like mean everywhere. This is going to be like all over social media. I wasn't even worried about getting knocked out. I was just like, I got to find my teeth. <laughs> but it wasn't to the point where it was like, like I was just hurt. It was like, I did like that and it was still in my mouth and that's when I smiled. I was like, because <laughs> I still had my teeth in. It's funny now, but it wouldn't have been funny if my partial would have fell out during that time. The truth. Yeah, I don't want any fights to be like that anymore where, you know, my mouthpiece falling out and I get hit with a shot. It's just one less thing I have to think about in the fight. It's going to be super hard to take out of your mouth. Like, during your breaks, you probably won't even have to take it out. You could drink water and you could breathe a lot better. Like, it'll be life-changing. All right, man. All right, man. This, this, this your product, man. Yeah. It's going to be in front of the world. It's going to be on all access. So people going to see if my mouthpiece come out. <laughs> they, they know who done it. <laughs> in a fight of this magnitude, everything matters. From loose ends to loose teeth, every tiny microscopic detail must be scrutinized and addressed. Naturally, Errol Spence even throws in a pool party and a little backyard paintball. This is a man who prepared his entire life for what awaits him, always displaying the calm noted by those who know him best. I just see that he's more focused, like he knows what he's going in there to do now. Only thing I normally tell him, I didn't tell him last fight, I could kick myself, but it was um, protect yourself at all times. That's the only thing that concerns me, but everything else I think he's ready now, he's confident, and you know, he's gonna bring home that other belt, so. Don't mistake ready and confident for finished. There's plenty of polish left to apply to benefit body and mind. You got lots of tattoos, though, so you shouldn't be too scared of needles, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good on that. I'm just getting my body ready to go out in the all-out war because I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. It could be anything. It's all about training your body, you know, physically and mentally to prepare for war. I feel like the greats, with his basketball, football, boxing, whatever, you know, they kept focused 100% all the time. And that one second you lose focus, that's the one second you can either get caught or something can happen. So I believe that's what's going to keep me at the high level, just staying focused. Because once you lose focus, even in life, once you lose focus, you know, anything can happen. I'm sorry.
I work very hard, but I know that the harder I work, you know, it's gonna benefit, you know, my kids, you know, my mother, my father. So I know it's not just me. And that's one of the things I had to realize again once, you know, once the car accident and, you know, certain things happened, they realized that it's not just me, I'm in there, not just me, I'm fighting for, I'm fighting for everybody because everybody's sacrificing their own way. There you go, control. And when it gets hard, I'll be like, man, like, I don't know if I can do this. But then I'll be like, my kids deserve better. Now I'm gonna keep working, I'm gonna keep grinding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, way to work. Way to work, way to get there, way to get there. Come July 29th, it's nothing but, I expect him to have nothing but destruction on his mind. And that's the same thing for me. I have nothing but destruction on my mind and basically you go out, seek and destroy. This belt is for all the marbles at welterweight. I feel like this is the biggest fight in boxing right now. This is the fight that everybody been yearning for for years. One of the biggest fights in the past decade that I can think of. So, yeah, it's pretty big. Terrence Crawford's competitive bearing is not limited to snapping heads back. Oh no, Crawford is a winner. A champion. In games of cornhole, stoke his fire too. Ever since I was a little kid, my dad always told me, you don't have no friends in the ring and you don't play boxing. So when I go in the ring, it's simple. I'm going to win. Get a little higher. This is the biggest fight of my career to date. And you're not about to be like, oh, man, I beat you. No, I'm going to be like, oh, I beat you, because that's how competitive I am. There you go. Oh. It's not fun to me losing. That's what makes oh. the game fun, winning. Oh, you God, I'm prepared to do whatever I have to do July 29th to make sure that I bring all those titles back to Nebraska. On the best nights, when lightning jolts and thunder booms, when weathering is required and fight fans become meteorologists, boxing doesn't take place in the eye of any storm. It is the storm. With all my favorite colors. This is a fight that I've been wanting for a long time. This is a fight that a lot of people say I've been running for, I've been scared of. We here now, and I'm going to show the world I'm the best fighter in the world. All my baby you can call it the egg factor. If you got it, you got it. Something just got to be in you. That is something that certain fighters got that certain fighters don't got, and it shows in the ring. The imminent fracas between Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford guarantees that kind of fight, an extreme event of epic proportions of dizzying danger, the kind that wrecks cities and enthralls a worldwide audience simultaneously. He's accomplished a lot. I've accomplished a lot. What better way to have two prime undefeated fighters fighting for supremacy of the welterweight division? Yeah, don't take him to school. This ain't no hype, it's the truth. I have all the ability, and I'm going to beat one of the best fighters in the world. That was said to deal on who's the best pound pound fighter in the world once I beat Terrence Crawford. On Saturday, July 29th, when two undefeated champions brawl for four belts, they will share pretty much everything. But when the perfect storm hits with staggering force, rattling and reverberating, another undisputed title at stake, they won't share an agreement afterwards. Only the winner can decide whether this storm is indeed perfect.
On Saturday, July 29th, Errol Spence Jr. will fight Terence Crawford for the undisputed welterweight title. Yo, I'm the best out. After rest out, poke my chest out, they at out. Edo Field left out. Give up about your mentions. Been fighting every day, writing and lightning every way. Y'all the stars of the mall on the Titan of today. They hot, I say now. Black, white, gray spot. Old school, cook it in the clay pot. Great Scott, a great shot. Y'all party with the other people, Kelly A.I. Give me space like an astronaut. When they think of 